Hey, so I decided to redo the introductory video uh, and the audio dialogue for this video series. I noticed that the first couple recordings seemed a little quiet. Also, on this first video, I didn't really do a good job of explaining like what this whole video series is about. Uh, so these videos are based on a Steam guide I wrote a while back about min-maxing the game and essentially uh, doing everything there is to do in the game in three years. And people were asking for a video of this. Uh, so I enjoy playing the game a lot. Uh, I really had a good time figuring all this out. And uh, you know, I feel like uh, I could do it better the second time now that I've kind of learned from my first mistakes. Unfortunately, uh, it's been like a year since I played this game and I end up just making a bunch of mistakes anyways. They're little things, but you know, when you're really hitting that, that razor's edge of min-maxing, uh, you know, they kind of add up, but I also end up getting really lucky with some things, uh, which this game has that random element. So I, I think it balances out. It makes like a, a fair, uh, you know, presentation of kind of doing this, uh, without, you know, just playing perfectly all the way through. Uh, so anyways, I call it the, it's a harvest moon style challenge because like harvest moon, you have three years, you get a final score and the game is over. And that's how Harvest Moon was. And I really liked Harvest Moon. I actually played it a bunch back back when. Uh, so our objectives are going to be to complete all the achievements, which entails a lot of things. You know, that's going to be doing catching all the fish. That's going to be completing the community center. That's going to be getting the hearts with all the villagers. That's doing the uh, the board postings at uh, Pierre's Market with a little exclamation point to do a little quest for the villagers. Uh, you know, all that stuff, complete all the achievements. And then uh, we're going to have max hearts with all the villagers, uh, which is beyond the achievements, uh, at least as many as the highest hearts that you can have now that they kind of patched getting max hearts with everyone. Uh, we're going to be married with a child <clears throat> or two, whatever you feel. Uh, we're going to have the community center completed, pretty easy, uh, but part of it. Uh, one of each animal at maximum hearts, the slime hutch with all the slimes, all the wizard tower buildings, that's, you know, the um, the clock, the two teleporters. We're going to have the casino unlocked with the casino buildings. That's going to be the, the Statues of Endless Fortune. Um, we're going to have every single rare crow in the game, because I like my rare crows. Lots of swag. And uh, we're going to get all the star drops, which is pretty, you know, part of all this. Kind of just happens incidentally. So the trajectory to get this done... Uh, the main things, we're going to be looking to get the Copper Axe upgraded by Spring 11th. Uh, the 9th is a little better. Uh, we're going to get the Copper Pick in on the 14th or the 15th. Now, we need the Axe in by the 11th because that's the Thursday before the uh, Strawberry Festival. And if you get it in... Uh, you can't get it in on the 12th because that's a Friday. You can't get it in on the festival day. And then if you go in the day after, then he's going to be upgrading your axe when salmonberry season hits. And you really need that copper axe by the 14th, ideally, because in order to get uh, plus, or in order to get level four foraging for plus one berries on or before the 15th is a really big deal because we want to get as many salmon berries as possible in that first salmonberry season or at least a lot like 250 is good enough you can get like 350 i want to say depending on luck so that's going to be one of the things we're really shooting for and uh, i also like to get the copper pick in or the, the the pick in for its copper upgrade on the 14th or 15th because then you're going and collecting salmon berries all day uh, while your pick is upgrading now this all becomes rather challenging because we're going to be purchasing 150 strawberries on the Strawberry Festival, which, of course, you then have to water every single day while you go around and harvest salmon berries. But the good news is you're going to have salmon berries, so you can actually afford the energy to water them. Now, in order to make all this happen, we're going to be have to making breakneck progress in the mines. Now, the elevator unlocks every five floors are the objective. We're going to be going for 10 floors per day until floor 40. And you can really get 15 floors on the first day because the first five floors are pretty easy. Uh, after floor 40, it's about five floors per day until you get the copper pick back from its upgrade. Uh, it just it gets really slow uh, over floor 40. The frozen floors, uh, it's just tough. You know, it takes so many uh, strikes to break each rock. And uh, depending on luck, it can, it can, it'll really slow down. I usually just get five floors per day. Uh, and this, of course, will be 
after fishing every day to get energy for the mines. So you bring fish into the mines with you to eat for energy. Uh, that is, of course, until you get salmon berries. Those salmon berries are a big deal. That lets you just go nonstop permanently once you have all those salmon berries. Uh, so the, beyond that, we're going to be going for the community center bundles for fall foraging, fall crops, and the entire furnace bundle should all also be complete around spring 18th, the end of sandberry season. Uh, the idea is we're going to be getting into the gold floors uh, around the time that we get our strawberries coming in because you're going to need those gold floors in order to build, uh, you're going to need the gold to build quality sprinklers, right? So we'll be getting into the gold floors, which allows you to get your first fire quartz, which should be the last thing that you need to complete the minecart bundle or the furnace bundles to unlock the minecart. We're going to have all tools to copper by the end of spring along with the pick to steel uh, and the axe also to steel in late spring early summer. Uh, we should have 400 blueberries planted and watered by day two of summer along with 60 miscellaneous crops. I like to do 30 peppers, a bed of corn, a bed of tomatoes, and two beds of like rotating flowers and beets. Now, when I say a bed, I mean uh, eight crops, which is the area around one quality sprinkler. And uh, back on the blueberries, it's important to get those blueberries in and watered by day two of summer because they're necessary in order to uh, buy the star fruit, which we're going to be getting uh, later in summer. Uh, then we're going to want to get ideally 100 or so melons planted and watered by summer 6th. Uh, if you can't get melons in, it's uh, acceptable to do wheat just to kind of uh, get the, the spaces watered and prepped for the star fruit. The melons in by the sixth is kind of like a bonus if you can get them in. The idea is to have uh, watered, hoed tiles, you know, quality sprinkler watered tiles ready and waiting for the star fruit that comes in on the 19th. Uh, so we're going to be getting, uh, in summer, we're going to be looking to get foraging up to level six for lightning rods as early uh, as necessary in summer. Uh, I usually try and get it in the first week. It t depends when you get your first lightning storm. Uh, this is why you're going to want to get your axe to steel so you can get into the secret woods to chop down the large stumps, which really helps level your foraging. Uh, it's really important to get as a bunch of lightning rods. You're looking to get like 30 to 60 lightning rods. We're going to spread them all over the farm. We're going to capture every single lightning strike that happens for the entire summer because we really want those batteries. Um, we're going to have the vault bundle complete for the community center which means the bus will be restored by the 17th at the latest. I'm pretty sure you can get it on the 15th. It really doesn't matter. As soon as you get the money from your first big blueberry harvest, you go and you unlock the vault. Now, what happens with the vault unlock, the reason we're doing this is because uh, on summer 18th, we go to the desert and you buy as many deluxe speed grow as you need for however many star fruit you're going to plant. And then you can spend the rest of the money on star fruit. So I ended up buying, I want to say, uh, three, maybe 350 Deluxe Speed Grow, I want to say, uh, along with like uh, 150 Star Fruit. And then on summer 19th, uh, if you got all those blueberries in and watered by the second day of summer, you'll get your second full harvest of blueberries in on the 19th, which should allow you to buy the remaining Star Fruit, getting you up to 300 to 400 Star Fruit. Uh, planted and watered with Deluxe Speed Grow by summer 19th. That's the that's the deadline. And of course, as I said before, all Speed Grow has to be purchased on the 18th. This is Deluxe Speed Grow, I should say. It has to be the Deluxe Speed Grow purchased from the Oasis. We're going to have the barn and the coop with three cows, three chickens, two ducks, and two rabbits by the end of summer. Really, as soon as um, after the star fruit, all the money you get should be spent on uh, just buildings and stuff. You want to get your backpack upgrade. You want to get the horse in. We're going to get the barn. We're going to get the coop. We're going to get all the animals because we're gearing up to get that greenhouse unlocked. Uh, we'll get the skull caverns unlocked probably during summer. It doesn't really matter. We're going to be farming the mines, gathering you know, all the ores we need to build the lightning rods, building quality sprinklers. Should have almost the entire field sprinklered by the uh, end of summer here. And uh, we'll be looking at... Uh, going into summer looking pretty flush. So first day, of, uh, or sorry, going into fall looking pretty flush. So first day of fall, 
Uh, it should get 800 cranberries, I'd say, uh, purchased on fall first, uh, along with whatever other crops you want to get for the bundles and the gifts. Uh, make sure to get all the fall crops bundles in. Uh, it's one of each fall crop. Uh, a couple of all the flowers are nice to get. Uh, you're going to definitely want to get uh, one of each of the trees tapped, you know. Make sure you get all the pieces you need for the bundles going at this point. Uh, the community center pantry bundles should be complete with the greenhouse restored mid-fall. I did it by fall 11th in my previous playthrough. That uh, says when the first pumpkin comes in, you can restore the community center. Uh, we should have all the tools to gold by the end of fall. Really, as soon as your first cranberry harvest come in, comes in the uh, the gold faucet is opened you know the money faucet as they should say <laughs> as they would say <laughs> and uh, you can pretty much just buy whatever you want at that point I start buying stacks of wood stacks of stone uh, I start getting my my preserving barns going my uh, uh, my brewing barns going um, start upgrading the house all the house upgrades you want uh, we should get to the point where you got the cellar unlocked. Uh, if you're on like the Riverlands, you can use the house for your preserving and or brewing barns to get them started. Uh, I also, you know, typically do uh, a little uh, brewing along the wall of my barns, uh, along with the cheese makers uh, and the coop. I usually, uh, you know, have the because uh, my coop, I, I do the rabbits, so I'll have like a loom for the rabbits to turn their uh, wool into cloth. And then I'll have like, you know, four or five of the uh, the egg or the mayonnaise machines that process eggs. Because uh, I go for artisan, of course, because it's worth the most money. Um, so that'll get you through to pretty much the end of fall. Fall, you've, you've spent, you know, you've got tons of money. Uh, we're we're going to start working on brewing and preserving. Uh, winter year one. Uh, this will be the time we can go in and get a uh, ton of iridium farmed. We'll have skull caverns unlocked, and uh, we're going to start swapping the field over to iridium sprinklers. We're going to be getting hearts with all the villagers, be getting in two gifts every week to every one of the villagers. There's, you know, not much to do in winter. Get your preserving barn full, get your brewing barn full, the house fully upgraded. Uh, you should get a cellar full of starfruit wine aging. Uh, mid winter or so we'll get the uh the pig barn with six uh to ten mature pigs just fill it up with pigs i don't care uh however many pigs you want to do i usually like to leave a couple spaces so that you can have baby pigs just because they're freebies whatever um now that'll get you through to winter um now during year two uh, as far as crops go you can get a field full of strawberries and the way you do that is uh, I usually save 30 or so strawberries uh, from my fall, or sorry, from my spring crops when I planted strawberries, save like 30 of them. It's a, it's a bit to save, but the idea is you run those through a seed maker. 30 is even a lot, probably. You could probably only save like 15 or 20. Um, you run those through a seed maker. You plant the strawberry seeds in your greenhouse on fall, mid-fall, when you unlocked it. And by spring, you should be able to turn all those strawberries you got and easily have like a thousand strawberry seeds to plant for spring of year two, or just fill the whole field with strawberries, however many it is after you plant whatever other crops you want, uh, all strawberries pretty much. And then from there, you know, summer of year two, you can do all star fruit or whatever else you want, it really doesn't matter. Star fruit's the most money, you should easily be able to afford an entire field covered in star fruit after doing all those strawberries. Uh, and then for fall, cranberries, pumpkins, you know, other miscellaneous crops, for the bundles and recipes, all that good stuff. Uh, during once you get to year three, uh, pretty much can plant just ancient fruit. You know the greenhouse should have rolled into all ancient fruit. You take all those ancient fruit, turn them into seeds. By year three, you'll have a field full of ancient fruit. Now uh, back in back in year two, uh, easily should be able to complete pretty much every achievement. Get all the fish in. Uh, be working on the request boards be getting your hearts up with villagers every single week uh, during uh, during year two after you get that star fruit in uh, you should get the, the whole field all juminoed out so you don't have to collect anymore by fall of uh, year two and then uh, pretty much all that's left to do is just run around and hunt for artifacts pick up the uh, occasional gather from your jumino huts and uh, you know give out two gifts a week to every villager until your max hearts with everyone you know, you'll get married, have a kid, pretty much the whole deal. Uh, you can go ahead and the the, uh, the bonus achievement is you got to marry Shane and buy chickens so you get a blue chicken. 
and then you divorce him <laughs> unless you want to stay married to Shane. Uh, that's the bonus that you get the blue chicken and you got to get it to six hearts, of course, too, right? Or full hearts. And uh, I think that's pretty much all there is to do in the whole game. You can go do the secrets, too, if you want at that point. But yeah, easily by, you know, end of year two, uh, you're going to have, I don't, I don't even know how much, millions, many, many millions. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to let the rest of this video roll. I'm going to turn this audio back on. And I'm going to uh, leave the original that I did of day one up. If anyone just wants to hear me kind of dialogue as I play it. Uh, you're obviously able to watch what I did here. And there's nothing that special to it. I think at the beginning of the day, I, I chopped down some trees and I built a chest so that I could empty out. Uh, I ran around and foraged uh, every area to get as much gold as I could from foraging. Uh, I also went to the beach and foraged the beach. And then I, uh, I sold all the forages uh, to Pierre to buy as many potatoes as I could and a couple extra parsnips get those planted, get them watered, and then I just start scything bushes around the farm to try and get some extra mixed seeds, uh, which are just freebies. And, um, you know, if you didn't get the nine spring onions to eat to keep your energy up, it's probably a good idea to keep something to eat. Uh, maybe keep a couple of the forages, uh, pr probably like, you know, 50 energy worth is, is plenty. No, I think I eat a little more than that. Maybe keep like 70 energy worth uh, to eat in case you need it for all this hoeing and watering that I'm about to do. Anyways, enjoy the rest of the video and enjoy the series. Hopefully this kind of clarifies what this video series is all about. And I uh, also should add that um, I put it in the description of this video, but my goal was to uh, make it so that you could simply look at the title of every video. And I did like a whole one for spring. So you could just pull up all of spring and you could see what I did that day or what I should have done that day. For instance, on the second, I say plant a green bean. I forgot to plant a green bean. I didn't plant a green bean until like the 10th. So I don't unlock the uh, the mine cart until the 22nd or 24th or something terrible like that. That's just another mistake that I made. Uh, so that's, that's the idea is if you, you pull up the playlist of spring, you can see what the task is for every single day without even having to watch the video. And if you want to see how I played through any individual day or like how, how I got 15 levels in the mines. You want to see, you know, how I handled my strawberry planting, uh, any of those things. Uh, you can watch the video for that day. And, uh, you know, I go through it and I just kind of chat the whole time. All right, well, here you go. More efficient to water in a little swath to avoid excess movement. I'm not doing particularly well right now, but I will get better. Here's where the spring onions come in. Like this, here we go. No, yes, there we go, there we go. All right, so it's 8.30, it's the end of the day. I've got a tiny amount of energy left. I think I'll just break a couple stones that are in the way here. Um, and then, you know, just uh, side some more bushes, I think, is the right thing to do. Let's see if I can make a nice loop. Let's, let's see if I can get kind of deeper in the farm and save these shallower bushes for um, later. Mix seeds, maybe I'll get those planted. Got a little bit of energy left. 40, I can go until 1 a.m. Try 
try not to waste too much of the, the nice grass. Uh, I'm going to want it for uh, my cows and stuff later. 10, it's getting nice and dark. Oh, and two more mixed seeds, nice. So the scythe will also kill uh, small trees. I really don't care about that. Alright, let's go until uh, midnight with this. Four more mixed seeds, that's awesome. That's it. There's really not much else I can do today. I've got an extra 50 minutes. Um, I mean, I could eat these spring onions and then maybe try and chop down a tree. Um, what do you think? Or should I save the energy for tomorrow? I think that's good for today. Let's go get our energy back. Look at that, foraging level one, first day. Beautiful. Nice.